and welcome to the Daily Space Weather. Your host, Smasho here, coming at you from the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. Welcome, spaced out viewers. Lots to talk about today. Proton events, major flares, and plenty more to cover. So this is the past. This is actually only about eight hours of solar activity, and you may see some activity up here in the northwestern limb. That's another part of the Tamathisco filament there ejecting. Here's a little closer view of that. And most of our Helio Viewer movies are indeed 24-hour videos. This is only an 8-hour video, and it does include an M-class flare and a coronal mass ejection. Also, relativistic particles showed up. So there's your there's a big spike in the proton flux. We'll talk about that later in the video. We've we had nine named filaments yesterday afternoon. Here's a 24-hour video of those same wavelengths. Huge filament fest happening right now. Plenty going on in the realm of space weather. And it's only getting more interesting. Let's go around the horn, starting with the southwestern limb. I remember the name of this one. That's the Lex Friedman filament. Is it going to set? Is it going to eject or perhaps collapse? Let us know in the comments what you think. Here's the southeastern limb. Major filaments over there, like the Hillary Clinton and the Kamala Harris filament. I forget the name of this one. There are too many for me to remember. <laughs> uh, here's the northeastern limb. Major filaments up there as well. One of our viewers decided to call this one the Peter Gabriel. So if you want to name filaments after living people, join us on Twitter. We are all over the internet at smash -o -mash. And here is the most exciting portion of the Earth-facing solar disk, the northwestern limb. And the likelihood of even larger flares continues as that sunspot group sets. It becomes more likely to produce an X-class flare. We've got radio blackouts and lots more stuff to cover coming at you a little bit later than normal today. Here's yesterday plus today. That's SDO intensity gram. And most of those groups fairly stable here. No major changes in terms of sunspot number. There are your magnetic fields, the SDO colorized magnetogram. So again, no major changes with the sunspot number or radio flux likely today, but likelihood of additional major solar flares remains very, very high. We'll tell you all about it. By the way, thanks to our latest gold Smash Team member, our gold level Smash Team member, if you want to support the channel, consider doing so via a, a membership to the Smash Team at smashomash.com slash smash team. We just replaced Patreon with our own subscription services site because we needed additional capabilities. So it's not because of censorship on Patreon or anything like that. That's not the concern. Uh, the reasoning was because, well, we just needed uh, the ability to do more stuff. So we decided to create our own web ring. We have a massive web ring associated with smashomash.com. You can find all kinds of links below the video to our forum. You can read about our mission at smashomash.com slash forum slash mission. You can find the merch shop, the forums linked there, the Smash Team site. Make sure you log in and click posts to see the latest posts for your level. Thanks again to gold and silver Smash Team members. There is also a bronze level membership if you are unable or unwilling to open your cobweb encrusted wallet and send us a couple bucks per month to continue creating the content. Check out the imagery of Shivaluch here. Fantastic image of Shivaluch here shared on VolcanoDiscovery.com. Some effusive eruption happening there. Effusive, explosive. Looks like some lava bombs must have rained down around Shivaluch. Fantastic image there for perhaps your desktop of your PC or maybe your mobile device. So here's what volcanoes are erupting. We're going to briefly do a rundown as we do most days. Shivaluch, at least erupting. And it's producing a gas, uh, a gas and ash plume of about 15,000 feet. That's a flight level 150. Sakurajima exploding, flight level 060, 6,000 foot ash plume. 
13,000 foot ash plume from Semeru over East Java, Indonesia. The Isle of Halmahera featuring Dekono, flight level 070, 7,000 foot ash plume from Dekono, 13,000 foot ash plume over the Isle of Sumatra from Carinci. Popocatapetl in central Mexico exploding, flight level 200, that's a 20,000 foot ash plume. Sancha Guido in Guatemala extruding some new real estate there. Uh, let's see. Emissions coming out to about 700 meters above the crater. Please do not fly your John Denver style ultralight aircraft or hang glider over the caldera. Fuego in Guatemala exploding, flight level 170. It's a 17,000 foot ash plume. Please don't pole vault. The caldera. Sangay in Ecuador exploding. 20,000 foot ash plume. Revenador in Ecuador exploding. 15,000 foot ash plume. And 22,000 foot ash plume from Sabancaya in Peru as it explodes at the flight level 220. Here's your seismicity for the past 90 days. We did have one significant earthquake over the past 24 hours. It was a 6.2 there at. Papua New Guinea, there is the location of that. 6.2 magnitude quake there that happened at 2124 Universal Time yesterday evening. Let's run up the list here before we get back promptly to space. By the way, the channel is not suggesting that the sun causes earthquakes or volcanoes. Uh, perhaps there's physics to explain it, but until there is, we don't make such claims. There's that 6.2. So besides that, it's been pretty calm here. Not a lot of quakes over the past 24 hours, and it looks like only one over a 5 magnitude there. So only one quake over a 5 magnitude. Make it two. There was one at the Kermadec Islands there, north of New Zealand. That one came in this morning at 1148 Universal Time. And welcome back to space. As we just bring you the most detailed solar imagery, and comprehensive space weather you'll find anywhere in the world. Congratulations on realizing the Smash News Network least busted name in news exists. Here's the past 24 hours in the house favorite wavelength, 171 angstroms. Don't worry, we've got plenty more solar imagery for you and a big time data rundown. Here we've added 131 angstroms. Keep in mind that is only the eight hours surrounding that M-class flare. And you may see waves reverberating across the surface of the sun as that flare happens. We see it too. Here's a closer view. And those are some spectacular images indeed. And thanks for leaving a comment, aboj 420 If you weren't aware, this video was originally streamed live to Twitch at twitch.tv slash smashamash. We stream the videos typically live and then we make them unpublished. So they become YouTube exclusives after they're live. And that format may be changing at some point, but in the meantime, that's what we're up to. The 10.7 centimeter radio flux, no major changes there. It's currently at 152 solar flux units. There's the one year chart to put it in context for you. The black line is the radio flux, the red line is the sunspot number, and the pink line is the 30-day wolf number. That is the, uh, the smooth sunspot average. So we, just like NOAA and NASA are forecasting, uh, we did forecast a CME impact. This is the Enlil spiral from the Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard. Uh, we're expecting late tonight, through midday tomorrow to see a CME impact, followed shortly after by a coronal hole high-speed stream. So there should be lots of interesting stuff happening in space weather. Uh, the, uh, the NOAA forecast there, forecasting it for a little bit later than the rest of us. In any case, there is the forecast there. You can see late tonight through about midday tomorrow, which is, I believe, exactly what we said when we forecasted this CME impact in the first place. <clears throat> and then a coronal hole high-speed stream to follow that shortly after. So we should see some quite interesting data there coming from Lagrangian point one, where the solar wind are measured. So here is the Integrated Space Weather Analysis Center, ISWA spiral, the, the other Enlil spiral that you can view yourself 
on the integrated space weather analysis page. You're looking at dynamic pressure here. And uh, while all of the CMEs that happened are not modeled in the imagery, uh, this one is looking fairly good there. There is some significantly dense plasma. And guess what, folks? There are additional coronal mass ejections headed toward Earth. So there is another CME strike headed this way. We'll get to it here momentarily, as if there's not enough news to cover when it comes to space weather facts. Next, we're on the Planetary K Index, which is a measurement of global geomagnetism. We're currently just this side of geomagnetic unrest conditions. NOAA did just send out some alerts for a KP4, so there may be some aurora to view. Let's take a look at Earth's magnetic moment for the past four hours. This is our geospace magnetosphere movie. We show it daily on the channel since the data is not accessible in archival form. So we at least show four hours of this per day the four hours around where we make our video. Pretty steady there, magnetohydrodynamic pressure out to about 12 Earth diameters. Here is our geospace ground magnetic perturbations map. This expresses uh, magnetic flux density in the, four, in the units of nano Tesla. It's also the past four hours. They're all based on the space weather modeling framework. If you want to read about what, where the data is derived, where the models are derived, Click the Details tab at the bottom of the page and click the Space Weather Modeling Framework link. Now let's head out to Lagrangian Point 1, the location of the ACE and Discover spacecraft as they make their solar wind measurements. So here's our real-time solar wind. Current conditions are about nine, just under 10 protons per cubic centimeter there. That's the solar wind density. Solar wind speed here, 468 kilometers per second. Again, we are expecting to see some significant signals, and we may have to get up early tomorrow morning in order to go check if we have clear skies over Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania, to see if we can see the aurorae here in Lehigh Valley. Next, looking at magnetic data. So these, these are your GOES magnetometers, the GOES 16 and GOES 18 there at their geosynchronous orbits. Those are near equatorial geosynchronous orbits, by the way, where, where their magnetometers are located, obviously. And let's move to the heliospheric current sheet next. So this, this data is derived from 51 ground-based magnetometers and magnetometers on stereo A and stereo B. And we are just almost right in the center of the south, the uh, south magnetic solar polar field. It's kind of pointed directly toward Earth right now. North magnetic field on the opposite side of the sun there. The plasma coming from the solar, <laughs> the solar body is indeed polarized. And Earth right now is in a south pole oriented current sheet depicted there in red. And let's move to our line of sight plot. Rotating this 90 degrees. Now viewing from Earth's perspective, our line of sight field plot you can see that fanned out B field shown there in blue. That's an indication that you're right in the middle of the south magnetic pole. And yo yo to you as well, Mike. Thanks for leaving a comment. Here's our line of sight coronal hole plot. And we've got a bunch of south pole oriented coronal holes here on the earth facing portion of the solar disk. As we show you daily, the solar polar field reversal process, here's 211 angstroms. Now, this one up here is North Pole, okay? So there is one this coronal hole up here. This is a North Pole coronal hole. So that's North. This is south, these are south, and these are south. So the sector boundary is somewhere like that. That's the last 24 hours in SDO 211 angstroms, and we can expect a significant coronal hole high-speed stream for this. Don't be surprised to see solar wind densities jump up all the way to about 50 protons per cubic centimeter, and uh, solar wind speeds there 
pushing 650 to 700 kilometers per second. That is a very well-defined coronal hole, and it's right on the equatorial portion of the solar disk. Those are the most geo-effective type of coronal holes, and we'll get to sunspots here in just a moment. First, once again, to promote the channel, we do indeed have a red bubble shop. So click the links below the video. We've got some awesome designs, including some new ones. If you click that link, you'll find the designs in order of best selling. Today's featured product is do the math and don't suck at it. Why? Because here's our work. We've shown our work, folks. Eight equals 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 capital D. That is the equation for all of those folks out there claiming nonsense about space weather and about cosmology, because there is certainly a lot of crap on the internet about these subjects. So we decided to create this handsome design here. Do the math, eight equals 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 capital D plus a high res edited image of El Sol there from SDO 171 Angstrom's wavelength. It commemorates the day that we made the design because it even shows the time and date stamps of the SDO imagery. So we invite you to do the math and hopefully you don't suck at it. So check out the merch, lots of other additional merch there, some less inflammatory, some even more inflammatory. You can also find links to the Hemp Lucid shop below the video. So check that out if you're in the market for CBDs or perhaps mushroom gummies. And let's get back to space once again here. Sunspot situation is very, very high likelihood of seeing major flares from this portion of the solar disk right up here. Also, this sunspot has already produced some major flares and it has not degraded. It's actually becoming uh, a little bit more magnetically oblong as we have very strong fields out front and weaker fields in the trailing region. There's still significant magnetic mixing happening there. It is Beta Gamma Delta class sunspot. So yeah, the north and west are the places to look for major flares. We'll likely be streaming it today. Let's take a look at that in the past 24 hours. So there's the past 24 hours of SDO continuum. Again, most of those sunspot groups pretty stable here over the past 24 hours. And let's move to energetic particles. So yeah, major proton spike here, and we're seeing significant polar radio blackouts continuing. So yeah, and those arrived in only about a half hour after the M-class flare. So those relativistic particles there moving around 25% the speed of light there. It takes about eight minutes for light to make it to Earth from the sun. So back in the napkin math, if it's uh, half an hour, that would be about 0.25C, about 25% the speed of light. And it's starting to subside here. We can expect this to continue for a couple of days. These typically last, you know, up to four or five days. Uh, so don't be surprised to see that continue. So there's the there's the flare. The peak flux was right at 1940 universal time. And the relativistic particles showed up, well, less than an hour later. Okay, so about 50 minutes later, maybe something like 15% the speed of light. So some very fast particles there and quite a few of them showing up associated with that M6.35 class flare. There are the radio blackouts. And uh, yeah, those that's a result of the those solar protons there. They're circling around the Earth's magnetic field lines around the poles and emitting radiation. And so, yeah, there, there you go. Now, these radio brownouts, those are caused by the solar flares themselves. These polar radio blackouts, those are caused by the protons. So always interesting stuff going on, and you can see some significant radio attenuation there happening out to about at least 7 megahertz completely blacked out there in those red regions. And of course, you can monitor this throughout the day. This is going to show you the solar flare induced and the solar proton induced radio brownouts and blackouts. As the D layer of the ionosphere gets attenuated by radiation. 
So there's what's going on. That's the pat. That's a that's an eight hour video there. Oh no, that's a twenty four hour video. That's one hundred thirty one angstroms. So uh, yeah, lots of stuff going on here. Lots of stuff happening. Here's ninety four angstroms. That's also a twenty four hour video. Again, coming at you a little bit later today than normal. It is, after all, our Sunday edition. And, uh, yeah, so exceptional. Look at the plasma just moving up toward the northwest. Watch the plasma. It's just hanging out there. It's just kind of slowly making its way toward the northwestern limb. So this one's just eight hours. That's just the flare. And we've actually brought up a composite here with the SDO browse data feature. So that we can rock that back and forth for you. So you can just see the activity there in various wavelengths. You can see actually some limb brightening here. Interestingly enough, right in here, you can see some plasma that's sort of covering up that coronal hole. It actually caused some limb brightening there as plasma gets reoriented, exposing more of that corona hole, essentially opening it up. It was probably there the whole time, but there was some plasma in the 211 angstroms wavelength. You can see that greenness and some blueness. So that's 171 angstroms also. Interestingly enough, it's moving there at sort of different rates there as different ionic states of iron are affected differently by these solar magnetic fields as the plasma aligns to those fields. So just fantastic imagery there. We'll let that play through. That also includes ionized helium at 304 angstroms. So that's three different wavelengths there. 171 is blue, 304 is still red, and 211 is green in this imagery. Keep in mind it's all part of the ultraviolet spectrum, not visible to the naked eye and not visible from Earth. You have to be in space since the mesosphere filters out the extreme ultraviolet depicted in these images. Here's 171 plus 131 angstroms. That's just the eight hours around the flare. And here's another close-up. Perhaps that one could be considered the money shot. And by the way, thanks to our new viewers for tuning in. Uh, congratulations on realizing the channel exists. <laughs> I know there's certainly a lot of space weather nonsense on, the, on YouTube. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you press the like button. And here's yet additional imagery. That's the 193 plus 304 angstroms that we typically use to show filaments. Here's a close-up of those eight hours. Those were an exciting eight hours, that extremely long duration M-class flare. You can see that plasma still hanging out up there. So I believe the Tamathoscove filament is, is still uh, intact. So what a great filament to name after Tamathoscove, somebody who knows a lot more about space weather than I do. And uh, yeah. Shout out to Tamitha Scove. That one, I named that one, and it was just by luck that this one's already associated with two Earth-directed coronal mass ejections. So that's absolutely perfect. And I've I've had psychic powers for the past about two weeks. So trying to keep trying to keep that on a roll. So let's take a look back here and orient ourselves for a moment using skyandtelescope.org's star chart as we always want to see what's going on overhead. So that's the situation overhead at Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. The sun currently in Aquarius. And if you're up before dawn, you might see the dark, the brightest star in the sky in the constellation Boates, the star Arcturus, which uh, it's going to be just west of your zenith. So if you look straight up and then you look down toward the west, you'll find a bright star down there. That's Arcturus. And let's take a look at the solar system next. Keep in mind, this is not to scale. It's from theplanetstoday.com. These things are very far apart, if you're wondering, much farther than depicted in the imagery. 
So let's advance this one week to show you our one week solar system forecast. Here's where things will be in a week on this lonely side of the solar system, devoid of gas giants and indeed other planets entirely. Let's take a look at coronal mass ejections next, since there is another one that has an earthly directed component. And that one indeed was associated with that M-class flare. So it's a quadruple banger there. We had a flare. We had major filamentary eruption. We had a coronal mass ejection that's earthly directed and a proton event. So that was a, a pretty good flare to cover, I would say. What about you? Let us know in the comments what you think. And there is that partial halo eruption. A second CME likely to show up. Sometime on the 29th. So yeah, sometime like midday on the 29th, we expect that CME to arrive. So plenty of going on in space weather. And you can see all of this snowy looking information here. That's all. Those are relativistic particles there showing up at Lagrangian point one, creating interference on the Soho Lasco C3. So more fantastic imagery here, and let's move to the Stereo A view. We've paused the view on Stereo A. That's the red sphere here. Stereo B is the blue sphere. And we paused this at 2053 yesterday for Stereo A and 2042 yesterday for the Soho Lasco C3. And you will indeed see a full halo here. So most of this ejecta is off to the southwest. So that's in this direction. Most of it's off that way, but you can see a halo around this eastern portion of the disk, an indication that it is indeed quite strongly earthly directed. So uh, while it's not directly at Earth, it is quite close to directly at Earth. We can expect a KP6 or 7 from that, maybe even a KP8, depending on whether the coronal hole high-speed stream has subsided yet and polarity and other things. So you never really know what the solar plasma is going to be like until it arrives at Lagrangian point one, because if it has a positive BZ, it's not likely to cause a lot of earthly effects. Check it out there, relativistic particles striking stereo A also. So let's just bring these both back. Keep in mind the time and date stamps are going to depict different data. So pay attention to those. The time and date stamps in the bottom of the screen there. So three events on the way and one showing up as early as tonight. So the first CME impact likely tonight. And then a coronal hole high speed stream shortly after. And then by the 29th, another CME impact. So exciting stuff. If you're at mid-latitudes, maybe you'll be able to see the aurora. Here are some 24-hour videos with our composite Soho Lasco C2 and C3 and the 304 angstroms wavelength of SDO. Yowzers. And uh, we knew there'd be a lot of work when it came to covering daily space weather. We knew it would get exciting. We didn't know it would get as exciting as it is. We didn't expect to see this cycle quite as strong as it is, but we are delighted to see it. So as we've been saying on Twitter, which has an utterly broken hashtag system, I might add, as we've been saying on Twitter, make hay while the sun shines, and it certainly does. So there is some more spectacular imagery there. That snowy information coming in, that is relativistic protons there striking the aperture of the Soho Lasco C2 especially. Dag. And yes, if you're wondering, dag is a real word, by the way. I say dag all the time, and, you know, it's, it's a real thing. It refers to the unprocessed clippings of sheep's wool. Yes, the unprocessed clippings of sheep's wool. Dag, look it up. If you're a crossword nerd, you probably already knew it. All right, so let's look at filaments here. Again, we've got a ridiculous number of filaments here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least eight filaments remaining there. If you want to name them, join us on Twitter. Just please realize that 
We've got nine named filaments at the moment. We'll go over that in, in a brief moment here. First, again, you're invited to Twitter at Smashomash, of course. Smashomash all over the internet. And just give that junkware a minute to load here. As we say name, that filament. So we'll put up the image there. If you want to edit it yourself and put a little arrow pointing to the filament. Here's yesterday's tweet about it. And those filaments are, let's see, Peter Gabriel. You got the Vernon Reed, whoever that is. You got Buzz Patterson here. Then you've got the Tamitha Skull filament, which is the, the star. Then you've got the Lawrence Fishburne filament down here. Then you've got the Kamala Harris filament, the Hillary Clinton filament, the Kurt Russell filament, and don't forget the Lex Friedman filament. It's an exciting time for space weather. And the likelihood of additional coronal mass ejections remains nearly 100%. So, yeah, lots of stuff going on. Probably way too much stuff for certain space weather wannabe channels to be able to handle. <laughs> also on the on the uh, Twitter feed, you can find pinned to our profile there the link to the free hemp lucid mushroom gummies. If you want to check those out, if you haven't tried the mushroom gummies, they're, we're, they're getting quite good reviews here by our viewers. So check that out. You'll find that pinned tweet on the profile page at twitter.com slash smash o mash. So check them out. Different solutions there for mushroom gummies whether it's for sleep, immune support, uh, focus, stress relief, etc. Check them out. Quite popular these days. Here's the past 24 hours and 304 angstroms from SDO with its great high-resolution imagery. By the way, we're seeing activity happening here at the end of the video. So uh, we saw a little brightening right up here, and I think a brightening down here as well. So here's the past couple of hours from the GO-16 SUVI. Looks like another CME happening right here. So that certainly looks like a CME occurring. We may have to make another video later today about it. And let me just take a moment to say welcome to the Neo Renaissance. As we are in the process of Maxa. Yeah, Maxa. You know what that stands for? We just made it up yesterday. By accident. Who knew? It stands for Make Astronomy and Cosmology Science Again. Maxa. M-A-C-S-A. -S Make Astronomy and Cosmology Science Again. Let's go to our bonus feature segment and blast through those before we get to meteorology. Charging hazards do exist here at the moment. There are some satellite charging hazards of the surface variety over the central Pacific Ocean. Here is our GOES electron flux as measured by the GOES-16 and GOES-18 from their geosynchronous orbits. They measure it at the F flare of the ionosphere. So we're seeing pretty low levels of electron flux here. And the NOAA forecast model here is we're probably going to see a little bit lower levels than forecast. So I, I'm expecting these to be down here for the coming three days. A little minor disagreement there with NOAA. Nothing too out of the ordinary for that. There is the one-year chart to put the relativistic electrons in context. And we'll take a look at the F layer of the ionosphere, the vibrational frequency of the layer of the atmosphere where it's measured, the 300-kilometer layer. The upper layer of the ionosphere, the F layer, not to be confused with the D layer, which is what we showed earlier, where that radio attenuation occurs. This is just the vibrational frequency. We are seeing some significant anomalies here. So if you're not familiar with this imagery, not to worry. We will show the anomaly gram as well. So this is the previous day showing two hours per second. It's vibrational frequency in megahertz, millions of vibrations per second. Here's the anomaly gram. We would note that the South African anomaly is still near the equatorial African West Coast, and the South Atlantic anomaly appears to still be over the South American continent. Right around there, kind of right in the center of South America.
Here is the latest image. That's 1415 Universal Time Ionogram and 1415 Universal Time Anomalygram. We'll also show the total electron content. That's the free electrons between your GPS satellite and your handset. A run of about 12,500 miles, and that run can cause major signal refraction if there are a lot of free electrons in between your GPS satellite and your handset. So let's see where they are with our total electron content forecast. And once again, shout out to Tamitha Scove. Hey, Tamitha, if you know what causes this low electron content over the southern tip of South America and this low electron content over the northern Caribbean there, let us know in the comments. Uh, not sure if you view the videos or not. I'm sure you're quite busy. However, these are ongoing low electron anomalies right there, right around the, what is that? That's about the 70th longitude line. Right about 70 longitude, we see these two enduring low electron content anomalies. Not sure what causes it. If you've got theories, the rest of you viewers out there, let us know in the comments what you think. And here's the latest image of El Sol Helios, the closest star, the sun, whatever you'd like to call it, and we've got a new sunspot that just rose. So that was not visible when we did show prep, but it is now. So there's a new sunspot to get named. I have no idea what the name will be. There are the magnetic fields. And let's take a look at these flare producers. So there's that sunspot. And it might not look that complex, but there's a lot of plasma hanging out around it. It's the Tamitha Scove filament, which has already produced two Earth-directed CMEs. So that's uh, psychic powers at work, apparently, there. Who knew? And it is a Beta Gamma class. I wouldn't say Beta Gamma Delta class, but I would say it's certainly Beta Gamma class. This one here. That one is Beta Gamma Delta class. So anyway, the Northwest is the most likely place to see major flares. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. These groups down here are no slackers either. That's Beta Gamma Delta class. Those are both Beta Gamma Delta class sunspot groups. And of course, this one is in a shape like an oval. So that's something for people to be frightened about. I'm sure somebody will be frightened of that. So make sure you maybe make a clip of this video. All right, so we're about to get to meteorology. First, once again, take a moment to visit our links. The official website of the Smash News Network, least busted name of news, is smashomash.com, and welcome to the Neo Renaissance. We are in the process of writing a paper to explain the mechanism underlying the solar cycles, and it's not getting less likely to be correct. It's getting more likely to be correct because we're not finding any evidence to refute the hypothesis. It'll just be the most important science paper in hundreds of years when it passes peer review. If you want to read about it, become a gold member of the Smash team. Press like, press subscribe, press share, etc. as we make astronomy and cosmology science again. Thanks to our YouTube viewers for tolerating the pathetic, putrid, and disgusting censorship on all big tech platforms. That's Apple, Alphabet, Meta, and Twitter. So moving to meteorology... We've got some nearly hurricane force winds in the North Atlantic. Check it out. 68 mile per hour winds there showing up on this very strong low pressure system here in the North Atlantic. So pushing hurricane force winds there. Uh, dag, it's got to be some serious wave action there on Newfoundland. Also, the southern tip of Greenland likely seeing some high surf. Probably not the best place to go surfing. Although I guess if you have a dry suit, it could be a thing. Anyway, those are the strongest winds on the whole planet right now. Right there, close to home in the North Atlantic. So here are the surface winds of the eastern world. And, oh, we were going to show something yesterday. Uh, what was that? Sea surface temperature anomalies. So let's go to ocean, and we'll go to sea surface temperature anomalies because there's been an enduring low temperature anomaly around the equatorial Pacific, and you can see that's starting to break up. So that is an indication that La Nina is ending. 
as we see some anomalously warm water finally mixing in here around the equatorial Pacific. Also up here, some breaks in that cold water happening. So that is an indication that global weather patterns are about to change. And let's get back to where we were here. The surface winds of the eastern world. We'll switch to the jet streams. There you go. Huge jet stream divergence here in the western Pacific. These are the jet streams of the western world. And of course, once again, we see an S shape here in the North Atlantic, which of course, as everybody knows, stands for Satan. So that's something else to be frightened of whenever you see an S or a letter or a shape in natural phenomenon. You know it's always something to be frightened of. A huge S bend in the jet stream there indicates that, well, there's probably a boat with a bunch of Illuminati Moloch worshippers eating babies or something up there in the North Atlantic. No big deal. Here are the surface winds of the Western world. Here are the surface winds of the Central world. And here are the jet streams. Hopefully that helps. Here are the water vapor maps for the Americas. Some rapid cloud nucleation happening down there in South America. You can see some pockets of moisture there moving around the South Pacific. Also, it shows great imagery of this counterclockwise rotating low pressure system an upper level low there in the North Atlantic. It does have some dry air mixed in the middle of it, which actually makes it less intense as dry air tamps down weather systems. It reduces convection. Anyway, here is your weather.gov map. If your location is lit, click your location. Massive blizzard warnings in California. We'll show you a little snow outlook here in a moment. So that's your weather.gov map. First forecast we'll show is the GFS temperature anomaly forecast. So some very warm temperatures there coming into the east central portion of the U.S. West of the Rockies is pretty cold. East of the Rockies is on the warm side. That's your 72-hour GFS temperature anomaly forecast in degrees Celsius. Here is your pressure and precipitation forecast based on the same model. It's the GFS 72 hour. Additional ice storms coming here. So ice storms expected in the central part of the country there. Feast your eyes on that. And heavy precipitation here continuing to be pumped in from the Pacific into California. It's been a pretty moist state in the past few months. So here's your, the same model here for accumulated snow depth change and just forecasting another four feet of snow in large portions of California there. No big deal. 72-hour GFS accumulated positive snow depth change forecast in inches. And let's take another look at snow here. I just want to just show you what's going on in terms of snow depth. And check it out. There's snow in Temecula and right around Los Angeles and... Yeah. Some snow likely fell in San Diego there. So it looks like there may be some snow on the ground right now in San Diego. Maybe not the most normal thing you've ever seen. Santa Barbara there. Snow on the beach near Santa Barbara. So how you like them apples? Apparently it's so hot that it's cold in Southern California. Anyway, there's your global snow depth map. And let's take a look at what's going on with snow here from Global Cryosphere Watch. So a little quick report here on what the current status is. Snow extent is just kind of in the normal part of the range here for the 1998 to 2011. It's right between one uh, plus and minus one standard deviation there from the norm. Snow water equivalent, very, very high here. So expect an epic melt season. We're expecting to see some flooding here, depending on how temperatures play out. We hope it doesn't get warm too fast, but don't be surprised if it does occur. Expect to see some flooding and be prepared for it because it's coming. It's going to be an epic white water season. And as far as the snow mass balance, keep in mind that doesn't include the mountains. So snow mass balance here above one standard deviation over the 1982 to 2012 average 
It's in many ways a seventh winter in a row, featuring record snowfall in the northern hemisphere. Continuing on to our NASA Goes Lightning Mapper. It looks like Arkansas and Missouri and Tennessee saw a little bit of lightning over the past 10 hours. Here's a real-time lightning map, and we don't have any active cells currently terrestrially striking in the U.S. Looks like the Mediterranean's got some. Italy's got some thunderstorms. There you can see some active strikes happening there around the central Mediterranean there, uh, off of the east coast of Italy, for example. And let's take a look at some real-time data and close this thing out. There is your U.S. Doppler radar map. We will focus on the lower 48. There's vertical motion of water droplets and ice crystals from the ground-based Doppler radar systems. Here is a satellite-based system showing clouds and fog. And there's a different satellite-based wavelength. That's the water vapor map. Here's a recap to close things out. We used to make these meteorology segments separate, and now they're together because of, I guess, algorithms. Anyway, there's the current data for U.S. Doppler. Here is clouds and fog once again. There is water vapor once again to complete our recap. And thanks for tuning into the Smash News Network, least busted name of news. We remain surprised that you've ever found it. In the meantime, I'll have been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash -a mash signing off. And may that solar wind be at your back.